Mark, thank you. The Russian assault on Ukraine continues into its fifth day with Russian troops and tanks driving deeper into the country and toward the capital of Kyiv. All this happening as Russian President Vladimir Putin puts his country's nuclear forces on high alert. Terrell Germain Starr has been on the ground in Kyiv reporting on the plight of the Ukrainian people and what they're experiencing from hour to hour. He is the host of the Black Diplomats podcast. He's a non-resident senior fellow at the nonpartisan Atlantic Council Eurasia Center. Terrell joins us live now from Kyiv. Uh, Terrell, first of all, thanks for taking time out of your day to speak with us. I can see you're on the move right now. Uh, where are you and, and where are you headed? I'm embedded with a uh, volunteer armed uh, group that has uh, answered the country's call to take up arms against the Russian invasion. And so yesterday I was at one checkpoint and today I'm going to another where these armed groups will stand uh, at the ready to defend the, uh, the city from um, mostly, you know, making sure that every car that comes and goes is not bringing any harm to the civilian population, but equally important, making sure that they find saboteurs and eliminate them, which is something that I saw last night. And Terrell, you know, I think most people at this point know that the country, Ukraine, has asked men ages 18 to 60 to stay behind to take arms, like you said, and fight for their homeland. The military might of Russia outweighs Ukraine, but I think the bravery and strength of the people, the civilians there, is remarkable. And I think people around the world are seeing this. And you've had the chance to talk to these civilians, to talk to these men who've stayed behind to fight. What are they saying to you? What has this been like for them? Very much uh, kind of like the, the, the saying from Muhammad Ali, I, I, shocked, I, shocked, I shocked the world, I shocked the world. Uh, they, they, no one believed in the Ukrainians, but the Ukrainian people and people like myself who've been here for years doing the work, who knew that this country would not fall as easily as uh, many in the West assumed that it would. In fact, there were 25,000 automatic weapons that were given out, and so there were more men. There are more men and women who volunteered to take up arms, and there were guns available mm -hmm. to these residents. Some people actually brought their own weapons. Uh, to the fight, and so the 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 the, the resolve of the Ukrainian people have been incredibly remarkable, and it's something that I would estimate that has turned the course of this war. That they would not give up, that they would not submit. Where the Ukrainian uh, professional military uh, can come in and take and and, 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 um, and stand up the everyday civilian is whether it means with a semi-automatic with an automatic weapon, with a locked-off cocktail, with a rock. Is trying to throw everything that they can at the Russians, even if it's not a bullet, whatever they can throw, any projectile, that is what's happening right now. Mm. We can see, you know, Ukraine is a, uh, a, a, an incredible nation. The Kyiv is a modern city uh, in Eastern Europe. You were a Fulbright scholar, are a Fulbright scholar, and as you said, you have lived there for, for uh, quite a period of time before all of this uh, began. You must have friendships uh, and, and, and know so many people and understand their plight. And we've, we've seen these horrific scenes of, uh, at train stations with women and their children trying to, trying to escape. Um, are, what is going to happen with, the, with all of the people in, in, in terms of this refugee crisis that really is developing? Yeah, so basically I'm about seven or eight hours away from the border in, in, in uh, western Ukraine. I'm right uh, central. As far as what will happen to them, you know, this is something that we all expected would happen. Uh, you know, people did not think that this uh, did not think that this war would extend beyond the Luhansk and Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. People thought that he would just take over the remaining parts of those regions that were not already under uh, Russian control, and so when you when when immediately on the first night when you had these airstrikes that hit across the country, people were definitely shocked. Uh, but but I, mean, I wasn't exactly, but ma many people were, and so it, it just drove a major panic for people to leave uh, leave leave the, leave the country. Many of my friends have left the country. In fact, uh, however, some people, some of the journal my colleague, my Ukrainian colleagues who are journalists, decided to stay behind. They may not be in Kiev, but they may be in their doctors. They may be an hour outside the city, they may be in other in other parts of the country doing the work, but they sent their family and their friends out. In fact, I'm with Andre right here. Uh, many people 
uh, just introduced you to him. He's one of the men who decided to took up arms himself. He has sent his family to Poland, in fact. And so he's decided that um, he's going to stay behind and protect his country. Mm. Terrell, just to get an idea of what it's like there, what the people of Ukraine feel as far as where do they think this is going to go? How long do they think this is going to take? Um, and how is the feeling now that we're five days into uh, Russia attacking Ukraine? Well, at this point, you know, let, let's just take the facts. The Ukrainian military is outnumbered. But, however, the Ukrainian military is not outnumbered in regards to their will. Uh, if you look at, based on the estimates that we have so far of Russian, of, of Russian deaths, uh, the Ukrainians are making it clear that they're leaving bodies on. I was walking down the street the other day simply to uh, the show for what it's like to grocery shop. Uh, and, a, and a man randomly come, came up into my video and he said, uh, only Ukraine will win. F Russia, we will kill everybody. So there is a ingrained resolve to fight to the death. What will happen after that, people don't know. What mm -hmm. they say to me repeatedly is that they will not be slaves to Russia. So they will fight down to the last human being. And what that what will what will result is that every person every person will go down, um, go down. Uh, they're not they're going to go down and fighting. And so they're definitely not going to stand by. And, and, and allow a Russian invasion to take place without severe opposition. Women, grandmothers who are 80 years old are picking up guns. Mm, Children wow. who are 8 years old are picking up guns. It's all hands on deck. Terrell, uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, you know, you could have left and gone to Poland or, or escaped and gotten out of harm's way. In fact, you're staying and you're reporting for all of us. We know that uh, journalists are in harm's way. You're in danger. Two Danish journalists uh, were shot over the weekend. Uh, you tweeted, I'm alive. Um, why are you doing this? These, you know, I, if I were to say the French, the, the, the relationships that I've developed here were friendships that were severely undervalue how deep they are to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just like, you know, Andre is my brother now. I mean, the things that we've seen and been through together goes deeper than blood. Uh, and also, this is a career that I've spent all my life preparing for. I've done this work. Uh, nobody has given me anything. Uh, no one has given me any job to do these things. There are a lot of people who are out, um, you know, all the major networks who are doing this have all kinds of institutional support. I have none of that. I don't, and, it's, and that's perfectly fine. I'm giving myself an opportunity to do the work that I love to do, and I have people who are contributing to me and, and that's fine. I do this work because I love it. I would not see myself doing anything else in the world. I would not see myself running away from my friends and running away from my life's mission. I'm going to be here and do the work that I'm, I'm destined to do. Mm. Terrell, uh, we really appreciate you. And, and I mean, the bravery you're showing in the face of all of this and, and journalism is so important to know what's going on yeah. in Ukraine, that you're on the ground there and you could share that with us and the world. We appreciate you and stay safe. Our thanks to you and to Andre as well thank you. Yeah. for keeping you safe. Yeah. Uh, they, say, they say thank you, Andre. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You guys be safe. God bless you both. We're, we're going to be thinking about you uh, every day. Uh, and, and we want yeah. people to be able to follow your we want people to be able to follow your story. Once again, Terrell Germain Starr, the host of the Black Diplomats podcast. He's also the non-resident senior fellow at the Nonpartisan Atlantic Council. You can follow him on Twitter at Terrell J. Starr.